Hello everyone. I will explain in basic terms what is a feedback control system. To understand this, first we need to uh, understand what is an open loop system. So in an open loop system, there is no feedback to correct system behavior. In other words, system behavior only depends on applied inputs. So in a block diagram, you can represent this as a, your system, some physical system, you are applying some inputs, it produces some outputs. One of the good examples that I uh, use is cooking a ribeye in an oven. So first of all, you adjust your inputs. In this case, your inputs are kitchen timer and oven temperature. And they, these inputs determine your system behavior, right? So if you keep your teach, uh, kitchen timer uh, shorter or oven temperature lower, then you can get a rare ribeye. If you increase them, you can get a medium ribeye. Other examples include clothes dryer. You set a timer and then your clothes uh, will be dry or not. Then you basically adjust the timer or toasters. Now, in this case, there is no feedback mechanism that compares, right, whether your stack, for example, for the ribeye is rare or medium. Of course, you can use your eyes as the feedback or cutting the stack. I am not mentioning about that. So, um, in this case, system behavior can change when uncertainties are present. For example, let's say, um, your oven temperature sensor changed, you adjust it to, you know, uh, 350 Fahrenheit, but it is actually measuring 400 so that you will get a different input. Or same for like toaster, you set your timer in the room temperature versus in a much colder or hotter uh, environment, the output of your bread will be different. So to make it short, in an open loop system, there is no feedback. You set some inputs, you get your output, and this is what it is. On the other hand, in a closed loop system, we use feedback. A closed loop system also called as a feedback control system. And this feedback in the closed loop corrects system behavior. And you can think this as the one example, automatic cruise control system. You have your vehicle as your system. You have your controller. You are measuring the output of your system, which is the, you know, vehicle's speed. And your input is the desired vehicle speed. And here the controller's aim is to drive the difference between your actual speed of the vehicle, let's say, 58 miles per hour and you, let's say you set your input to 60 miles per hour so that you will have an error here two miles per hour the controller's aim is to drive this error to zero and in a close-up system we can make the resulting system behavior robust to the presence of uncertainties for example you can think one uncertainty as the road slope you know, regarding, regardless of you are climbing up or down, you know, your controller minimizes this error, makes this error, drives it to zero such, such that the output speed will be always equal to the input speed um, in an automatic cruise control system. Other examples include thermostat heater and missile control systems in the sense that, you know, you would like to engage with a target or you would like to lend your quadcopter to a truck or, you know, um, or, you know, your aircraft to follow a certain trajectory. These are all uh, is possible using a closed loop system. Now let's look at more closely um, as an another, to an another example. Let's say you have a physical system. In this case, you have a mass, you have a spring, and let's say you have no friction. So if you think mechanically, you know, since you don't have a damping effect, right? If you perturb this mass position, why? A little bit, 
and release it, then your mass will oscillate forever, right? You have no friction, no damping. So if, so if you would like to control this system in a closed loop fashion using feedback control, then first of all, you would like to measure its position um, using an encoder. Then this encoder basically goes through analog to digital converter because your controller at the end of the day lives inside a computer or microcontroller. Then um, you set some input, let's say for vibration control, your input is zero since you would like to suppress the vibrations. Uh, you don't want to move your cart from its original position, let's say, so to some desired position. In this case, input is zero. Then, since the input is zero for the sake of vib you know, uh, suppressing vibrations, the controller's aim is, again, to minimize this error, the measured output versus zero. You know, so to drive in this case, in this case, input is zero. This is the measured output. So you have minus y here as the error. You would like to drive this error to zero. This is the controller's aim. So in this case, controller basically, controller's goal is to virtually add damping effect through the software, through the control algorithm, through the computer, such that uh, while the actual physical system only has a spring, based on this feedback loop, we kind of add here a virtual damper, although it doesn't physically exist. We can make it exist through the software, such that once you have both spring and damper, then this basically oscillation will go to zero eventually after a transient uh, period for the case of suppressing vibrations. Now, you, as I also mentioned, you can also drive the mass to some desired different positions. In this case, you know, you can not only add a separate, a damp, and, you know, you can not only add a virtual damper, but you can also add other control mechanisms to drive this mass to different positions. So, in other words, the, tr the point that I am trying to make here, a feedback control algorithm, the controller basically uses outputs of the system and minimizes the error between the desired input and the measured output and then produces a control signal which is converted to digital to analog converter then this signal is applied to the actuators of the system in this case the motor of the mass such that you can virtually add some damping effect or some other effects is to basically make the physical system's output behave as desired. Another example is, let's say you have a quadcopter, you would like to drive it to, you know, three meters of an altitude, then the controls, a controller's job, controller's goal is to make this happen through feedback control. I hope you will find this video helpful and this is kind of basic introduction to feedback control and how we distinguish open loop versus closed loop. Let me know if you have any comments and I would love to answer them. Take care.